There are several materials that we have available in today's dentistry for doing veneer onlays. We could use feldspathic porcelain. This is a tried and true material that we've used for decades in dentistry. The other material that we commonly use is Emax or lithium disilicate. A third option that we can use is actually zirconia. Now the material that I like to use is lithium disilicate or Emax. I like it over feldspathic because it has greater strength. It's literally four times as strong as feldspathic porcelain. And because many of these veneers are veneer onlays or they're going over the buckle cusp tip, I want to have the strongest material available that I can. I also like the lithium disilicate over zirconia because I like the bondability of lithium disilicate over zirconia. Understanding that zir zirconia can be bonded, but I like the predictability of lithium disilicate for bondability versus zirconia. So the restorations that I'm going to use are going to be lithium disilicate, such as Emax. So the veneer preparation guidelines are the same kind of as what we do for anterior veneers. We're going to have 0.3 or 3 tenths of a millimeter for the gingival or for the cervical area of the tooth. We'll have a half a millimeter or 0.5 millimeters for the mid-body. This is an area where the ceramics is going to want to create more brightness and they might need a little bit more thickness to be able to raise the value, get more brightness in the veneer. Along towards the incisal, it's going to be somewhere between a half a millimeter, 0.5, up to maybe even 0.7. And I'll explain that in just a second, why we might want some additional thickness in that area. In teeth where I have to include the incisal edge, so I'm going to reduce the buccal cusp tip, I want to get a little bit more thickness so I can have a nice transition from the veneer area onto where the area is going to be covering or hooding over this buccal cusp tip. This gives me a little bit more bulk of material, a little bit thicker, and this is going to help reduce the stresses on that veneer when patients are grinding into this area and it won't be too thin. So I'd like to get a little bit more thick, bring in that cusp a ten couple tenths of millimeters more to give myself a little bit more space. We'll talk about this in the hands-on portion of the course. If I'm going to be doing a vonlay or veneer onlay, it's going to be the same requirements. I need about three tenths of a millimeter for the cervical, half a millimeter for the mid-facial, and again about seven tenths, eight tenths of a millimeter to create this transition zone as we go onto the occlusal surface. We've talked a lot about the anterior porcelain veneer course. If you'd like to find out more about it, it's right here on our DOT website. Just look for the porcelain veneer preparation course, and that'll show you how to do anterior veneer preparation step by step, much like what you'll be doing for the bicuspids today. A couple other requirements or considerations when you're doing these preparations. Number one, I want to have smooth, rounded transitions. So I want to have the surface as smooth as possible. Remember that your porcelain or Emax lithium disilicate, it's a glass. And so if you have any sharp line angles, these are stress points that can cause fracture or failure of your restoration. The second thing I want you to consider is what's the draw of the restoration or what's the seating angle of the restoration. So we're going to talk about that in detail. We're going to talk about each type of veneer preparation type and what the seating direction of the restoration is.